brought. So, this is just a little prototype. Haven't actually put it all together yet because I wanted to show you. But here's what we have so far. Here's the progress we've been making. So, first of all, the biggest change you see is I made the outlet, one of the outlet ports that go to the top, right? And that was because I knew that in designing this new condensing system, it needs to be really high up. It either has to be really high up or it has to be really, really long. And I wanted to kind of combine the two because, you know, space efficiency, right? Now, the, the taller you get it, the less wide it has to be, or the wider you get it, the less tall it has to be, if that makes any sense. But anyway, I kind of did a mix of both. And I didn't feel like having to bother putting, like, a, a elbow on that that goes up and then gets all the way up here then goes just to go down again, you know what I'm saying? I felt like it just makes the most sense to have the gases just go up from the start and come down. So this would be two things. This would be a reflux condenser and a real condenser, too. Now, a reflux condenser, the whole reactor seems to already be a reflux condenser, meaning the oils themselves already condense out of the gas and become oil before they even get outside of it apparently as i've been seeing but this is a lot of surface area to get all the way up here it's like a roller coaster you know like going up the goliath it's six flags it's gonna get to the top and a lot of the gases or, or the oils rather the low grade oils are just gonna fall back down longer chain hydrocarbons they're not gonna make it before they can even get to this point so they're gonna fall back down that's why i made this pipe three fourths of an inch compared to the, the typical one half this size here because this size would get easily clogged when those longer chain hydrocarbons condense out they just form waxes and thick gooey stuff that would just clog it so i made the sticker on purpose now hopefully in theory those condense out before they get to up here to this point because this copper pipe is thin it's a half inch, not three fourths. So, you know, they reflux down, whatever. Now we have pure, cleaner things coming through here, right? So they're gonna come through this copper condensing system. It's called a Lig Big Distillery. A Lig Big Condenser. Okay. I kind of like to call it a Ligberg condenser because that sounds better than lig big in my opinion or lig by whatever so this is just roughly put together but i want to show you how it works so this is we have this pipe and we have this pipe which is bigger than this pipe as you see it goes around it now imagine pretend like this goes up this whole pipe this is just a little section here but this is gonna extend through the whole pipe like that and the same way at the bottom like that so it's going to do that, and it's going to be all be soldered together, so it'll be a nice airtight, watertight. And in this outside column, these two inlet ports are for ice-cold water to pump in and come out. You see what I'm saying? So the ice-cold water is going to pump in, and it's going to get out, and then you know what it's going to do since this is going to be covering the whole thing? The ice-cold water is going to make this pipe ice-cold, which will then cool down the gases exponentially because as we know copper is the second best conductor on the earth so it would very quickly conduct that ice cold heat and since the water is constantly being pumped as well it's you know it's gonna work amazing so hopefully we'll do this like a good 90 percent of the oils I know it's depending on the plastic but let's just say 90 percent of the oils could be condensed out and they're gonna come down I'm gonna, you know, cut this back a little bit so it fits into here, but you see, imagine this goes into here after that. And this, you know, this system is the filtering system. So in this one, the oils will, you know, trickle down because this is angled like that. And they're gonna just all collect down here, which can be collected later with this valve. And also in here, let's see if I can open it, we have steel wool, which I've been using as a filter anyway. You can't really see it on camera, it's kind of dark in there. But I have steel wool in there, and what that steel wool will do, it'll do two things. One, it'll react with any sulfur products in the oil, and two, it will also help condense any possible oils that did not get condensed because it will steal the heat from them before they can, you know, leave and go on to this next phase. And then in here, this will be the water bubbler, which was before it will again. And then this will be where the kidney litter is, um, and I kind of messed up. I bought the wrong size thing at the top here. So, and I bought, I didn't buy an end cap, so I'm going to have to improvise. But what's going to happen is the gas is going to come down here at the bottom of this. This thing will be full of kitty litter all the way up, right? So then at that point, the gases will have to basically go through the kitty litter to, before they can leave. 
which would take all the moisture from them from the water bubbler and also clean up any smell um and also since it's clay it acts almost like a catalyst and it just cleans up a lot of stuff in there like so there's a lot of benefits and that could also be replaced or it could be you know changed to a different more effective thing than kitty litter you know right now the kitty litter is just one of the best things i've been using so far um now in this system i currently don't have an activated carbon and zeolite filter however I, like i said it could go right here um and also last change i did i added eight additional slots for the the nuts and bolts so it's this thing now goes up to 16 nuts and bolts and why did i do that because there will be really, really, really minor leaks at some places. Like, okay, so you see how there's a gap between, like, every place where a nut goes, like, that little gap there? Well, that gap used to be bigger. It used to be, like, this big, right? Before I had this extra thing here. And that, since the gap was that big, not being pushed down, that just a really small area there would be leaking. And unacceptable. We don't want to leak anything. Now, another issue is when I did go to weld this, it warped this plate, which sucks nuts. Because now, I gotta, well, unwarp it somehow. <laughs> I don't, I, that's a different problem for a different day, but yeah. So now we're gonna, what I wanna do, now that I showed you this, is I'm gonna braise slash solder all this copper together. And yeah.
right, we got her done and she's looking amazing. This was actually my first time ever soldering copper. So, you know, there's a, definitely some imperfections, but functionality above all else. I guess I could have melted those off. Don't really care to be honest with you. Let's do a little test of it. Right now. Set her up like that. Got some. Valde Bidene. Whatever they call it. Now, this water should come out the other end. Well, if I don't spill it all over the floor like I am. Oh, uh, would you look at that? Excuse me, did I say this water should come out the other end? I mean, this very fine wine. It's so fine, it's clear, actually. They don't make it like this anymore, I gotta say. It's a shame. All right, we got it running. As we can see. The liquid is moving back and forth. Oh, where we start? Anyone want some cashews? No, oh no. I'm fine, I'll take it for myself. More cashews, yeah? Now, you see, no leaks anywhere. Amazing. I guess the real test is if we have any air leaks. Um, this the, the water flow clearly isn't running that well. Let's help bump it up. Some Cabernet, right? Hey, everything runs better off of a little rum. Aren't I right? Oh, look at that. Amazing now. It's a nice fluid movement. You see, this is all part of the plan because if I did this from the beginning, you'd never be able to tell that water's in there from the camera angle. Unless I guess I show down here the water trickling back down. But anyways, comes up here. By the way, this water will be ice cold. It's pretty cold now because this is in the winter time and this is rainwater. But we're going to put ice in there. So water, uh, the fumes come up here. And they get up here, they reflux on the way up, you know why? Because there's a piece of steel wool in here, just like they use in the stills. Um, I, and I've tried this before, and usually the steel wool gets so clogged with stuff it won't work, but that was with the thinner pipe, so maybe this bigger pipe will have, help it, you know? So anyway, it goes up here, gets the heavy stuff out, so that way they don't come over and mess up this clog of this area. Heavy stuff, get out, fall back down, get to re, re, broken down into smaller particles, and it comes up here. Boom, goes into this thing. Gonna be nice and cold. Oh, yes, you will. Might put some insulation around that eventually. Don't really know what type of insulation to use, but, you know, I'll figure it out just by researching stuff. Um, it's gonna come down into here. Hopefully, hopefully, any and all oils at this point in the gas will condense. Okay, I pray that they do because I don't have any more condensers. Um, this, is the, this is like the last chance here because in here is still wool. Which will hopefully still extra heat energy from the gases. They're gonna come up, bow, bow, water bubbler in there, boom, water, and then come across. This thing is full of clay, kitty litter. It's gonna come up, shoot out the top. Should be completely clean gas, ready for harvesting. That's the whole system. Drinks on me, folks. Ah, delicious.